school is just school. Like nobody really cares about school unless you, you know, are really forced into it by parents most of the time, you know, so they, you know what I'm saying, you know, they gotta put it on you to make sure that you stay on track and don't fall off, all that, so. I don't think that people realize the amount of stress and work that they put on us as students. I kind of feel like they forget at the end of the day that we humans too. I feel like because they're okay, they automatically think we are. You never know what anybody's going through. A lot of people suffer in silence. My name is Kavan Bailey. I'm the site coordinator here at West Philadelphia High School. I uh, galvanize all the resources at uh, Penn and I bring them here to create and facilitate uh, the school day and uh, after school programs. The biggest hurdle is some of the students don't feel like they like belong here. The school district is under-resourced, it's underfunded, it's understaffed. So if you aren't providing the students with what they what they need, you know, the bare minimum, why why should they be here? Calm space was something that was uh, pretty new, but very needed. My name is Emily Dunawilla. I'm a social emotional learning coach, but I um, manage and run the calm space, which is a space to de-stress in a safe environment for students after school at West. And it's also a space to socialize, to talk through what's going on during the day and in your life. So. This is Miss Vicky's like, feeling chart. So, are you feeling any of these general emotions? And then once we identify it, we open it, and there are more specific factors. Um, really? Okay, well that's nice that you're both feeling the same thing. I was just, um, Shahada who's behind there was helping me uh, come up. <laughs> that's her, if you can see <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, she uh, helped me come up with how can we help students in the comm space address goals. So we were talking about one of her goals is finding a job. So we, were, we decided like, okay, identify the starting point and identify the ending point. And in her case, that was not having a job and then having a job and then three steps to get there, which for her were apply or like look for jobs and then fill out an application and then references for her third step, which she's already doing. She's already applying, so. But it was very helpful because I think it's something that's needed in the comm space. So I realized, okay, I think I want to help create more accessible forms of well-being. So that's how the Calm Space idea was born. To create a space for people to come and de-stress and actually have people that can formally listen, have ways of de-stressing where you don't even have to talk about what you're going through, but you can just sit and color or sit and play with a stress ball. <laughs> I have the resources and the theoretical knowledge to build this space, but I don't have the cultural knowledge necessarily. So I think that it would be the best case scenario to have someone who represents the community to be in my role. My part in the, in the comm space and my vision um, was seeing that there was a need for students who wanted to actually talk about things, but didn't know how to go about it and didn't feel safe talking to anyone else. Ultimately, the goal is to really get a lot of peer-to-peer -peer action, helping each other out um, with the, the ins and outs of being a teenager. She asked me a question one day. It was all weird. I started thinking about it. Just asked, and then I t asked her, like, answer her questions. And I started going in there frequently. Sometimes she'll, like, try to talk to us about, like, our personal problems and stuff. Safe place to be in. Um, my experience in the comp space was at a really good experience, you know, um, be able to talk with other students and uh, a counselor here just to like, you know, calm my mind down. Like, I'm pretty comfortable. I trust them enough, like, to keep it to themselves, keep it private, and they give me like good advice sometimes about my problems.
I felt like it definitely helps because, you know, a lot of students, you know, they, they go home to a negative, you know, environment and stuff like that. So I feel as though that they used the calm space to, you know, to calm down and take a step back from things and to see what everybody relates to and what they're doing and, you know, to be able to talk to somebody when you need to talk to somebody. <laughs> They are like regular teenagers, so they'll they'll talk about relationship issues. Like I hear a lot about breakups, you know, issues with exes. A relationship treat you like high school to treat somebody else and not care about just your feelings. And being single, you can do what you want. You don't got nobody telling you you gotta come in the house at this time. You can't be around this, you can't be around that. It's, being single is freedom, but being in a relationship is structure. Sometimes it's also a space for them to talk about what's happening during the school day with teachers. Teachers, like, you'll be, they'll look at you like, like, oh, he's a, he's a, he's a straight A student. He gets to class on time. He don't do nothing crazy. Just stay out the way. And then like one incident can happen. And like the whole, like, this is a small school. So like the whole school gonna know. And then the teachers gonna find out. And then they gonna look at you different, ask you like all these questions. They judge you. They're quick to judge or they're quick to say you can't do this or do that. Instead but not then they be like, but then they'll be like, oh, be express yourself, be you. But then when a person like when you try to be you, they're so judgmental they, towards you. They're judgmental towards you. But then if you go under the surface, there's so many challenges to living in West Philly, and. For example, today the question of the day was, if you could change something about Philly, what would it be? And one of the students said, everything. And I think that's very telling. I think there are certain ways that they are very proud to be from West Philly, and then there are certain ways that being from an under-resourced community is unfair, and they know that it's unfair. They know that gun violence is not something that every community has to deal with. They know that, um, you know, losing, losing family members isn't something that every teenager has to go through. And yet for a lot of them, they've lost family members. They've lost um, members of their community. They do have to think about safety. Um, they do have to think about food insecurity. And so I think there's these there's these underlying issues that they may not talk about a lot that will come out every once in a while. What I hate about Philly, the violence. Every single day, this person has been shot. It's, it's all over the news a lot. So everybody thinking they gotta be tough, mm -hmm. bad all the time. When... I've been through racism too. You know, people calling me dark. was a student who was sitting in the calm space and she said, Miss Emily, do I talk white? I did not know how to answer that. And so I said, I'm not sure how to answer that. And I said, tell me more about it. And she said, well, all my friends say that I talk white. So, I, you know, I want to talk white. And she began to talk about how she wants to talk white because she doesn't want to use curse words. She doesn't want to use all the language that she hears that's inappropriate. Then we continued the conversation with a couple of other students, and one student said, like, yeah, I get told that I talk white all the time. Like, people make fun of me. People tell me that I talk white. I flagged down a teacher, Mr. Van Hook, who's the band teacher. Mr. Van Hook grew up in Philadelphia, so I asked him to kind of weigh in. And he was like, yeah, that's a microaggression that people use when they aren't comfortable with you being well-spoken. So we were talking about if everything changed about Philly and one thing could stay the same, what would it be? Josh, one of the students, had said, I would keep the language because it's like a cultural norm that's important to him. Lingo is different. Sometimes, only if you like, from like in the city, you understand how people talk, you won't understand none of it. Like, what did he just say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, me, I just, like I moved from here. People's like, 
you young boy. I was like, what is that? What are you talking about? And then John, that's a big, like. That's a nail. Yeah, that's a big John. Like, like, so, I like to put the outside of my hand. Oh, so, do that. You know that the bar can spin, right? That moved from here. Um, probably when I was maybe like 12 or 11. Um, and I moved to rural central Pennsylvania, where as you can imagine is a lot different than Philly. The first thing I noticed was, um, you know, I got made fun of for how I talked. Too, too much Philly, too, too much slang, you know, this, that, or the other. And I really, really had to learn how to navigate white spaces. It taught me how entrenched a lot of racism is. It wasn't until I moved back to Philly that I was told I talked white. So I had to deal with experiencing both the transitions from Philly to rural Pennsylvania and then back and then being told that I talk a certain way and it's not the way that I should be talking. But I feel like I am a good bridge between not only educating the side of people who are telling me that I talk white or, oh, like you, you don't talk like other black people, you know, oh, I, I, you know, I like this. And then the other side of, oh, you, you, you talk too white or you're this and, and, and you're that. Um, but for me, it's it, it shouldn't be about how I talk, but about like my experience and, and who I am. Black people shouldn't be looked at as a monolith. They live in a neighborhood that's predominantly black. They go to a school that's predominantly black. Their friends are predominantly black. But, you know, a lot of the jobs out there, um, especially ones that pay well, are gonna be in white spaces. Um, so little things like your hair. You gotta worry about your hair. You gotta worry about how you dress, how you talk. You gotta worry about how you smell. There's just so many little things that they don't know yet because they haven't experienced it yet. It's not something that we focus on. We should, but we don't. I just wanna make sure that I'm being an example for other black people that you can be who you are and still be black. You know, when we step outside into the street, you know, I'm looked at just as, you know, the same way as you, doesn't matter how I talk. <laughs> Honestly, I've been thinking a lot about a sense of belonging, a sense of self-worth. Those are key things that it's like building someone's core, you know, like a core strength. Then you can go forward and do anything. You can go to South Dakota for college and like still be okay because you know that you have that like core self-worth. Community, I feel that those people coming together and people bringing themselves, like putting their energy into other people. Let's say you play football and all the stress coming to you from home, your parents is going through all this and it's coming on you. Sometimes it's gonna mess up your ability on playing on sports and in the classroom. You're not even gonna feel like doing your work. And it's just, it but, feel like everything piling up on you. You're not gonna know what to do. Yeah, so. A few people like you can really talk to and they will to listen and understand and get you out your mind, calm you down. Even like your friends that's, your right friends that's gonna be in your group and you can talk to them sometimes. Like Josh, I talk to him all the time. My big thing is making sure that they know that like, this is my neighborhood, this is my school. We look out for each other here. Um, and yeah, there's just so much power that comes with being valuable and feeling valuable. And I want the kids to know that like they're, 
you know, nobody's turning away from them. You know, the stuff that they're going through, like, I want to know. I want to be a part of. I want to support you. I want to help you. So if we can start in the neighborhood, if we can start in the school, then you can create your the neighborhood for yourself that, like, you can be who you want to be. Like, you don't have to be in this box. White America has already drawn this box for you. You don't have to keep making the box smaller for yourself. <laughs> um, and I feel like, you know, that's what we, as a black community, as the West Philadelphia black community, um, will do. I think the students need to feel ownership over where they live. Um, and I don't, I don't think they get that. I don't think they understand how much power they have within themselves. My goal is to get them to not only recognize that they're valuable, but also feel valuable. In turn, you then start to look at, you know, other people who look like you as being valuable. And then, you know, the people in your community uh, then start to look out for each other. You then start to talk to each other more. Uh, when you value yourself, you then start to value where you live. I just want to be like a staple in the community and the schools that they know that like somebody is here for you. Your parents might not be, your friends may not be, but somebody is here for you. Love y'all. Good things. I'm rolling. <laughs> Welcome to Sayer. The <laughs> best school in Philadelphia. You took my part. <laughs> you took my part. No! no. That's my oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Welcome to Sayer. The best school in Philadelphia. Come with us and we'll show you what our school has to offer.
My name is Jet Brooks. My pronouns are they, he. My name is Jenna Edmonds, and I use any pronouns. My name is Jerry Mar Ortiz, and I use she, they. My name is Jordan Joseph. My name is Nia Zion Newton. Hello, my name is Angel. My name is Kobe. My name is Omar. My name is Joseph Brand. I am the university assisted community school site director at Sayre High School. There are a lot of changes. When I started, um, there were very few students uh, in the program, and so um, we've worked very hard with a great team over the years to build our program to what it is today, what it's going to be in the future. And <laughs> um, my role here at Sayre, currently <laughs> making him look better by comparison. But usually I'm a student and, you know, fighting for my life through each class. Um, and uh, my role here at Sayre, I am the um, after-school coordinator for the Netter Center Community Partnerships Organization. Um, and here to make Tyshawn also look better by comparison. <laughs> uh, my name is George. I am the garden and nutrition educator, and I started just in December. My name is Tracy Collier. My role at Sayre is the health and physical education teacher. Uh, I also teach freshman seminar. Uh, I also coach the girls basketball team. Sayre, what a place. Boy, are we lucky to go here. I'm a senior. I'm a junior. I'm a sophomore. And we love it. We have made so many friends. Some things that make me happy and bring me joy as Sarah is has to be the students. Some students as Sarah are really kind and really sweet. And they're in my class. And they're my friends, of course, you know? Really friends. They're my friends and I love them a lot. And I also really like cream soda, even though it's not as Sarah, it could be. Because it is top notch. <laughs> I love my friends. I feel like I've met one of the best group of people here to be friends with. They're just all so kind and supportive, and they make me feel like I matter and like everything I says matter at all times. A half my day is spent in the office, but then as soon as I come to the school and I'm interacting with the students, I feel so much better and much more happy. Sarah, Joy, that's what you'll see. You'll see conversations, you'll see arguments, you'll see deep conversations, you'll see uh, friendships, you'll see relationships. Um, you'll see a lot, but you will see, the most thing that you will see that I love most is um, just being comfortable. Right? And you don't see that a lot of kids being comfortable at school to the point they don't want to leave. And here, it's, like, it's hard to get the kids to leave. I have to turn the lights on and say, it's time to go. The kids and students in our team here are amazing. And given any kind of challenges that you know we may come across, like the resiliency and the perseverance and the, the, the just um, camaraderie between students in the after school program is, is inspiring. Um, I learn from them every day. My favorite thing about Sarah is basketball, like the basketball team, because that's where I met most of my friends at, and they're like. They like the closest people I know and who I tell everything to and I hang out with all the time. I love the sports here. Like I love the programs here. Like I like after school period because like everything you get into at there is going to open up your views and like especially if, if you get into the right programs and talk to the right people, you're going to be in the right place. I play basketball and it's like the floor should be clean better. It should be air conditioning in here. So when we play our games, we don't have to be sweating like that. <laughs> our building is truly state of the art with the best resources Philadelphia can provide. Even the school itself can sometimes seem very uh, institutional, you know? There are not a lot of colors in some of the hallways and stuff like that, but it can still be a very warm and nurturing and safe space for a lot of students. And so I think that, um, yeah, I would say I would want them to know that appearances can be deceiving sometimes. Uh, the building itself needs a lot of fixing. I feel like if you give people the right environment, they'll act better. Make the school like more newer. Because if kids come here and they see like the school is not newer, then they're going to have a messed up attitude. If they see that the staff and everybody is actually 
putting into the building, then they're going to have a positive attitude. So, yep, the library is a space that um, we've been working on. We've been working on this courtyard out here to beautify this space. So, you know, we've gotten up, but so far, um, and then we sort of ran out of money and capacity, and then uh, the pandemic certainly derailed a lot of that. So, I mean, it's an old building. I think it's very institutional looking, but I think it doesn't describe or prescribe sort of the students that go here. I mean, we, we recognize the challenge aesthetically that this building presents, but I think that part of what we do as, as team members in the after school program is push through that and, and try to uplift and um, empower our young people and to find joy in the building. Here at Sayer, we have amazing facilities that makes this place feel like home. We always stay hydrated. The water fountains, they need to fix it. Um, and we need a water fountain and stuff like that. Maybe in a gym, get some Gatorades, put water. Kids are thirsty, right? They need water, right? I just need water. Right? It's hard getting water in school. Right? You know, you have to go all the way to the front of the building and then the water machine's not working, right? People might not think that's serious, but if students are expected to be in school all day, right? Eight hours without water, it's just like, it don't make sense. Oh, well, bring your own water bottle, right? You can't bring water bottle. And from those situations, a student can easily feel like they're not cared about. Hello, hello again. Nah, but come, come with me. We're gonna go to a wonderful classroom, the best classroom. Her name is Miss Harrison. She's a new teacher here, and I've had her class for like years. So like, oh yeah, I'm not the new teacher. Sorry. Let's go. Um, right this way. Okay, class. Turn the page. Why are you listening? I don't feel like the teachers actually teach here, and there are some teachers that do actually teach, but when they do, it's like the bare minimum. And then some of the students in the class are really ignorant, so it really like stops the teaching and everything. I get a lot of uh, flack from the students saying like, teachers don't care, and I'm always fighting them. Yes, we do. Like, we come here bright and early to be with you. Like, well, everybody don't do that, Mr. Kind of like. I'm trying, right? I'm trying. Every day I'm making my goal to just reach a different student a different way. Like, and I don't care how I have to do it. I may have to be antagonist to you, right? Just for you to get that energy. And then I'll build you back up. And then next thing you know, you understand where I'm coming from. So I think that we just need to make them feel like they are important to us versus we just holding up a standard and expecting them to just make it. You know, um, and I think that alone is the, the biggest problem that we have. Outside of all the little things, um, resources is, yeah, is kind of terrible and things like that. But just a sense of togetherness, like they are people and teachers are people too. Um, I think that's the biggest problem. Just understanding we both are human, we both have a goal. Another thing I like most about Syria is the fact how you know, a lot of teachers and stuff, like, they're all, they're all, like, you know, fun to hang, hang around with. Like, they all, like, kind of got that bond, like, that chemistry that you have. Like, you know, it's, I don't really think you can get that from anywhere else. But, you know, Sarah overall is, like, a really good school. I didn't know if y'all was doing art. Right. I didn't know if you were doing art or what. Art, this is, this is art today. Right. We pulling out art. So this is So this is a quesadilla we grew from scratch. My guy Bob here three these last week. Um, so like my role specifically has to do with gardening, agriculture, and cooking. And it's a welcoming space, and the goal is just to be non-judgmental, to f help these students feel comfortable and to find like who they are. Uh, sure, something here that brings me joy at Sayer 
is actually the beautiful garden we have around us because it's one of those things you can start and you can see your progress as you do it over time and it's easy to keep motivated when you can see that you're doing something right. It's amazing, it's beautiful to watch things grow and I'm, I'm happy I'm a part of it. But I definitely found more of a community as more people joined the gardening club. It was beautiful to see our cult grow. It's like <laughs> I love so much about the school is the amazing students. They're so wonderful. Like, look at these students. They're perfect. Like, oh my God, those are definitely my friends. Oh, and uh, this is my other friend, JJ. Yo, is that the camera video? Yo. That's a really good one, You do that. We're gonna redo that. Here, you're looking at me. You're looking at me. Hi. And I just love hearing the input from the students and how they could, how they vision Sayer in the community here and what it could be. Action. Action. Usually, we can go to the club right now. Right? You should not go for <laughs> <laughs> You shouldn't go for it. Your education is disvalued. You need to succeed in life. But you might be able to stay in school. You know what? I mean? You should act up in class right now. You should. No. They're probably talking shit in the room. Right 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 in the room. So something I would want people to know about Sayre is how much the community cares about the students here. Like from the principals, the teachers, the guidance counselors, the after school program people, like we really dedicate our, our time here to these students and um, I just feel like people here deserve a lot of recognition for that. Yeah. We have a great team here um, and I think that Come to Sarah and find out, okay? Like, you can hear what you hear and you can see what you see, but you have to come here and experience Sarah High School to get a better understanding of what actually happens here. And it's amazing. Wait, what? Like this. <laughs> Wait. Roll the credits. Okay.
Hi, I'm Mr. Lishwab. This is Parkway Center City. I'm the art teacher here. Welcome. Uh, we're going to highlight some really incredible uh, sculptors and, and ceramics people. And actually, here's a couple of them coming right now. <laughs> now, Gloria, come here for a second. These guys will be much better at telling you what's going on in the classroom than I will. So give them your attention, help them on as much as you can, okay? Hi, my name is Nyla. Um, I'm in 10th grade and my favorite subject is ceramics. What I like about ceramics, um, I like being creative with the clay and I find it relaxing. Hey guys, this is Gloria, what people call me Glow Glow. I'm, I'm a 10th grader and I love art because I love my painting. But right now I'm working on an art piece. It's a leaf bowl. So let me give you a tour of class before it starts. Also, I'll make sure to pull some people for you to interview too. So, ceramics is all about the skill of shaping, but in this class, we get to make whatever we want. Let me give you a tour of the class. So right here is where we go every morning, first thing. This is our smock station. We have to put on our smocks before we start doing artwork. Lejois gets mad when we don't have our smocks on. I guess he doesn't want our clothes to get dirty. Ooh, somebody's been thinking about me. Anyway, this is where we place our finished project after they get fired. These are glazes hardened. So they actually came out pretty nice. These are things looking good. Okay. Over here is our, actually our workstation. We prepare the clay over here and we're not allowed to go anywhere besides this table. We don't want the other projects getting messed up. And finally, this is our glaze station. These are different colors of glazes. Honestly, sometimes they'll come out the same color, sometimes they won't, but it's all in the process. And I'm gonna put you in a little secret. They actually smell like turtle tanks. Don't tell us why. Oh, that's about to start. I think that's my cue to go sit in my seat. All right, guys, how you doing? Come on, let's get to work. You know where the smocks are? Let's go. Okay, you're doing good, but just make sure that you clean the brush more often before you go back and forth. Your water's getting dirty. I'll get you some more. Hey guys, my name is Naeem. Uh, as you know, like I'm in the 10th grade and I'm not that crazy big of a fan of art and like, you know, just sitting there painting like that. I'm more a fan of physical things and like running and like gym. But just like this guy, he agrees with me. <laughs> Say hi. Hi there. He's cute. I love turtles. And animals. Girl, that looks nice. What you making? Well, I'm just glazing it right now. Um, I'm making a face mask, and you gotta be careful when glazing because you don't know what the color's gonna look like when they are fired. Yo, Israel, why are you late? Chill, bro, I don't wanna talk about it. Anyway, you should go get a smoke before Lejois sees you. <laughs> hey, my name is Israel. I'm in the 10th grade. Uh, art class is okay. I ever much rather be in gym. That's Israel. He's pretty cool. I like when he comes to class. Yeah. <laughs> you can say I have a tiny crush on Israel. No, you got it all wrong. Let me help you with that. Ah, uh, the arms on the inside out. There you go. Okay, now let me help you button this up. Mm, I, I got it. I got it from here. Why don't you want me buttoning you up? I got it. I got it. I don't bite much. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. I got it. Okay. You smell good, by the way. I know you weren't here the last few classes, so here's something to work on. Thank you. And if you need any design ideas, just let me know. All right, cool. What design should I do? 
Um, you should make it colorful. Pass me some colorful colors. Here you go. I need a brush. Oh, right. Here. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hey, Nala, did you ever get rid of that gum bacteria? Did you ever get rid of that ST? Whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all are doing too much, and y'all both know those things aren't true. Y'all need to chill. Uh, I don't know what they doing. They need to relax. Yeah, I know Nyla and Gloria. They've been friends for a while. Hmm, this isn't the first time that they've been crushing over the same boy. Things usually start to get messy about now. Oh, you want to know about the art we were doing? That's really nice, Gloria. I really like the way that you get the lines going. It's nice and solid. Hey, everybody check this out. This is really nice. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> that art does look kind of nice, Gloria. You can have it if you want. I don't know. I'll think about it. Mr. Lajoie, please come to the office. Thank you. I'm being called to the office. Could you watch them while I'm gone? And Gloria, could you do me a favor and wash these brushes in the last class? Okay, thanks. Naeem, what color green is that? Uh, Lashua said it's like a pukey green, I guess. Uh, I don't know if it'll look good on your project. <laughs> nice. What? I thought it needed a little something. That's not cool, Nala. Whatever. I'm back. Did you guys miss moi? Why are y'all so quiet? Um, I just think that we're concentrating. You know, if there's one thing I learned about art class, it's that a lot of glazes look the same before they go into the kiln. So, hopefully, she doesn't notice. <gasps> Why is all this puddle glaze here? You must have put too much on. No, I used this tiny brush. No way all the glaze came from me. Oh, I see what's happening here. Too bad, I don't give a about this project anyway. That's not how you felt when he wanted it. I never said I wanted that. It's gonna be pukey green. Boy, as if I would give it to you. I don't want her making something all cute and giving it to Israel. You can have it when I'm done. I liked him first and she knows it. Oh, you think I'm taking the focus away from the art? Nah, this is performance art. What's that? I know you didn't just break my piece. Oops, that was such a klutz. <laughs> Guess I had to break yours too then. You better not mess up my project than you already did. Try to stop me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm gone for 10 minutes and you guys are fighting? You two? Come on, let's go. No offense, Mr. Lejoie, but I think you can't fix this situation. Let me go talk to them. If you think you can straighten it out, fine. But if there's any more, whoosh, got it? I feel like you guys are arguing over a new boy every month, and where has this gotten y'all? Y'all have been friends for the longest time. Can't y'all see that no boy is worth this arguing? Hmm. Besides, don't you think he smells funny anyways? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he kind of does. You're right, London. It's not worth it. And I'm sorry, Gloria, I came at you like that. No, I'm sorry. I'm the one that came after your gums. Friends? Friends? So, me and Nala got into a fight. London was right. We did get caught up with the same boy. He wasn't even worth it, honestly. I'm just glad we did get yelled at more about Le Joie. Well, can I go back in now? I want to try to fix my project.
Yo, guys, you should have been cleaned up by now. The guys are gone already, even. Come on, let's go. I think I saw Mr. Lujois fired my broken pieces for my project. I got really inspired to do an abstract sculpture. See, I love that. You're so creative. I should ruin your work more often. No, oh, you love me. No way. Oh, yeah, you do. No, Gloria. Look who it is. <gasps> I can't believe her. No wonder she wanted to drop him. We should. We should. We should let them have each other. Let's go get some ice cream. Okay. No, you don't have to laugh. Somebody says, I like to Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I think you're about to laugh, bro. Right? <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> But the state of arts equipment here. This was my grandfather's. He was a filmmaker. <laughs> my first impression of the school was that I could relate to it. I love a good making space, and so just seeing all of the different places that Bob kind of like, not exploded, but like took over the school with his art department, um, it really inspired me that the space itself should be part of the film. Hi, I'm Bob Lejoie, I'm the art department here. I've been fortunate enough to put up art all over the building. I've got some really nice uh, screen prints here where they cut out their silhouettes and they screen printed and then added things all the way around. Uh, it was fun making them work with themselves because they gave them a chance to see themselves. Um, all the paintings and ceramics and printmaking pieces on the wall just brings a very artsy atmosphere to the school. It just felt alive with um, all of the work that students had made and it felt like there was an enthusiasm coming from Bob and coming from the students to um, engage in ways of making work and making art um, that felt new, that felt exciting, um, and that that was something that was really valued. But this is for the production room. Um, the kids love coming in here with the green screen. They can do whatever they want and have the green screen behind them. Yes, sir. Oh, we'll look at her. We'll look at her on the ground, bro. Whoa. Ah. All right, cut. I have experience as an educator and admin throughout all of the ages, but the least amount of experience in high school. And so it was really nice for me to be working with high school students who really wanted to be there. Hey, Ladon, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Ladon, 16, uh, sophomore at Parkway. And, and I'm feeling pretty good today. And you came to one of our film meetings. Yeah, so. I wasn't here for an entire week because I got sick, so I couldn't attend. Things happened. I wish I could, but they just kicked me out. Would you want to do a little behind the scenes and help us? Yes. Like help us with the sound or something? Yes, I would. Well, so while you're talking, and we did that with while well, editing, now we're going to capture your reaction. Like, you are like, listening to her, but you're not really listening to her. I've worked with high school students before. That was before coming to Penn, that's what I did. 
So I've been able, like I know more or less on how to interact with high school students. Sometimes it gets awkward, sometimes, you know, but I feel like we all went there with like open hearts and they saw that. That's why at, at the very end, you know, they, they became very comfortable in front of the camera. They, beca they became themselves because we, we allowed them to be themselves and they allowed us to be ourselves as well. Oh, I didn't record that. <laughs> he's kidding, he's kidding, he's kidding. <laughs> you, 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 you guys fall for all these ones. Oh I believe you, right? Like, that was feel. so good. I didn't know that was going to come out like oh. that. I saw that one coming. That was so good. I didn't know that there was water. That was so good. There was water in there. All right, so now nobody can touch that. That was amazing. Because until Gloria gets back in the scene. I think it was really cool to me to have the relationship that we had with the students over time um, like grow and develop because it felt like um, there were times when we were really collaborating and times where we had to sort of, or I guess I should say times when the collaboration felt more natural, um, especially more towards the end where it felt like the students felt like they could be like, you know what, let's try this in this way. Um, I feel like we arrived at that place um, through just like being in the school, spending time together. Um, I think I have a new refreshed vision of working with high schoolers. I, I have always said that working with every age group has this charm, but there is something so nice working with the minds of high schoolers that I didn't, that I hadn't experienced so much before and I really enjoyed it. I like that idea. Oh, like we add a little interview for you? Yeah. At the beginning of the semester, I think I was most concerned with making good use of the time that we had with the students when we went into the school. So like figuring out um, how can we like do activities that are going to be fun so that we like start to feel a little bit more comfortable around each other. How do we um, pull a story out of nothing um, together with like a really large group because there were a lot of us there were a bunch of students like maybe eight to ten who were coming at the beginning um, so at the beginning but it, during pre-production I was really focused on uh, sort of facilitating space that we all had together um, to make good use of that time and come up with a story that people would feel excited about you know students and us and then you like, tried to stop me and then LaJoie came in and stopped it before you could my favorite moment in the process of making this film was um, when, you know when students got to do some like heavy acting when like Gloria was <laughs> like uh, throwing the the ceramic on the floor and seeing how excited she was to do that. The best moment to me, um, I don't know, the snack box probably. Uh, I had like class before the shooting, so sometimes I don't even have a time for lunch. So yes, the snack box would be like a moment. <laughs> yeah. Snack box time. Bob is a character, and I think he has a great relationship with the students. Um, and it feels like a lifestyle for him. He's collecting things for the art room. He is an art, artist outside of school. Um, and he was really fun to collaborate with. I think I have about 80 skulls in my collection, most of them which are home, but a lot of them are in, in my art room. And the kids love it, so. Yeah, I'll let you know if it's in shot. Uh, but make sure that it's coming through, uh, loud and clear. We have so many challenges along the way. Audio, we have some te technological challenges, so like the audio, you know, making sure that time was right, that everybody was able to be there to participate. This film happened because we all worked together, you know. We, would, we all put our, our effort to make this happen, you know. And everybody did it with so much grace, and, and I think that was one of the best parts about this. We're starting with Gloria saying, you're killing it. And that is... So many details were up in the air for so much of the semester. And I think it was a challenge to be able to stay on top of everything, but also ride the wave of like, 
yeah, we don't really know actually what we're going to be making, um, and we're just going to sort of do our best and put things together with what we have um, was a challenge. I think it um, is to interact and communicate with the kids because I don't really have a lot of experience with um, interacting with children, uh, not children, like teenagers around that age. And I just sometimes I find myself just don't know what to talk about and just don't know how to like interact them in a natural way and what kind of question it's more like proper or like proper to ask. Yeah, I think that would be like the most challenging part to me. Do you want to be a future actor? Well, like, uh, if they want me to. Okay. <laughs> How about you, Gloria? I don't know who's they, but. Um, my character, my character and I are pretty similar because I can be a little extra. And way back then, I was a little boy crazy, so yeah. Um, a big thing that I overcame these last two semesters was my relationship with tech and um, I proved to myself that I don't have to be scared of all of this technology and I can, I can do it, I should give myself more credit. Um, so I think having more confidence with using softwares and equipment and things like that is something I will take forward. Oh, I want to keep doing this. This is fun. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why even, if, even, that it, even though it was challenging at times, we, we enjoyed the process. You know, I personally enjoy the process. I was tired, but I, I was still shooting, and I, and I was actually, I, I looked forward to being there because it was fun, and we were having fun. It felt a lot, a lot like play, you know, so it didn't really feel like a heavy assignment. I guess what I'm taking away from the project is just like feeling really excited about filmmaking, which is really nice, um, and also being excited about working with high schoolers. Um, yeah, I think moving forward, I want to work on a lot more collaborative projects in general and um, would love to spend some more time in high schools. Um, I feel like I can start from an idea and a vision and bring it to life, and that is so amazing and satisfying. Is that coming from back there? Yeah.